catching my breath. I think it is probably around 5.30 a.m., which is a little late for our normal wake-up time. I'm making Carly breakfast in bed on the alcohol stove. milk, oats, and raisins for this morning to be fast. It is freezing in the big Arroyo Valley, at least at the headwaters of it, which is where we're at, where we started it. Plan for today is to day hike about 15 miles, do um, a loop hike back to here, and then maybe hike somewhere warmer to camp tomorrow night. So, uh, that's it. Bye, Mom. Campsite day. I think it's day five. How was your first sip of hot milk in the morning? It's hot and nice. Are you glad I, you brought that down jacket? Uh huh. It's very cold today. You look so good this morning, my love. I'm grouchy. Yeah. Don't worry, you have breakfast in bed. Super epic, and now Carly's pretty tired. I'm gonna make her. I'm gonna make her some dinner in bed. Okay, bye, mom. I'm so excited to make you dinner in bed. Okay, well, bye, mom. Okay. Day six started out at about 6:30 a.m. Early morning start. Uh, it was a layover day, day hiking day. And it was a pretty big day of uh, just about 18 uh, and a, half, a little over 18 and a half miles, 18.64, moving time eight hours. 
numbers, uh, 15 minutes rounding up for easy numbers, and a pace of 26 miles. <coughs> uh, we started where we camped and decided to do this little loop hike around your entire life lakes down in the big or a rare area and then First uh, off, back up that one west this is not the second drainage. It stretches on. So let's uh yeah, let's get into it. You can look at the the pace here. Uh, the it, we start with a pretty big uphill and that explains those slow miles and crossing big Moro, which was the hardest um, river system slash creek system to cross on our trip actually. Um, going into our second mile, Sometimes still I going like uphill. It all at once. Pace is getting better, third mile, still going uphill, pace is getting a little better, and then uh, fourth mile we this is one of our fastest miles of the day, if not our fastest. Uh, we were going downhill, seeing some beautiful lakes. Uh, looking at mile seven, we got a little off trail crossing a creek over here and had to backtrack through a big boulder field, uh, which slowed us down quite a bit and just pushed us because we were dry hiking a lot um, in that section. Looking at mile 12, we start a really steep descent. Yep, we can see that right here, into Big o o Oreo. <laughs> Pardon my uh, butchering of that uh, Creek, Spanish Creek name. Um, and you can see this is also a very slow mile. It was really, really steep switchbacks, hard on knees, pine cones all over the trail. Uh, mile 13 is also very slow, and then we didn't have a single mile. Full mile under 28 minutes going up big uh, Arroyo. And, Life moves and that is because fast. the trail is you don't stop really, look really bad and well. you could non existent miss it. in places. So it's a lot of off trail travel. There's also a lot of um, boggy uh, wetlands that come off creeks from this steep hillside on both sides of the canyon. You have to travel through it so your feet get wet. Let's pop into Google Earth and take a look at what we see. Okay, so here's our start. This is a very buggy, um, popular campsite. Has a bear bend. Um, and there's a historic cabin right there. I would not recommend camping here. The mozzies are so bad in uh, June. At least the June are over there. Pop open this elevation profile. Review the data. Mid elevation just under 8,000 feet, average 9,450, and then our max at 10,900, rounding up for even numbers. Uh, speed 0, 1.5, and 3.4 for a mid max, mid average max. Uh, <coughs> total distance totals this is logging at 16.9, and then <laughs> uh, I just kick it myself because the day before we did a 5,000 foot day. And then to do a 17 mile, uh, 3, 4,338 feet day with a max slope of 37%, uh, and then negative 38%, which I, I believe that was descending into a big area over here, Arroyo, right there, that's where that negative 38, oh, looks like it's because it's there yeah but it's there and then our average slope 7.6 negative uh 10.5 this is a long day on trail at 11 hours 16 minutes and 15 seconds let's 
So zooming in real close, uh, big area. We just put our, our dry feet and boots, our trail runners, and proceeded to get our feet wet crossing this uh, big area because there's a fork here. So we made it across this one fine, but then this one we got our feet wet. And you can see how we're trying to like <laughs> cross all these forks with keeping our feet dry. So um, we should have just taken our shoes off and walked all the way across. <coughs> these um, tributaries because a lot of confluence is coming together right here and put your shoes back on. But it, it was very, the bugs are out, it was just, it was a tough outdoor situation. Beautiful hike up this ridge. You are strong. So there's a lot less snow over up there, and you'll see that in some of the GoPro footage. Here's the Five Lakes Basin. Second lake, third lake. So these are just a series of gorgeous lakes. Here we continue uh, southwestward, past more beautiful lakes. Also, uh, going back to this lake, there's a ranger station right up in here somewhere. I'm not sure if it's, uh, I don't see an actual building. There might be one there that I'm just not seeing. Uh, what else? This way. But out of a total of Descended into the second valley over here. Uh, a lot of switchbacks, big descent. So we can see where that's up right here. So we go from 9 8 to. This is where we got off trail crossing this creek. The trail comes around this boulder field. We went further down, ended up in this boulder field, looked at the topo and realized that we could go around this way or this way and get the trail quicker. So we saw this big cliff right here. We're like, that's not right. So we ended up dry hiking until we got to this water here and then continued down to big Arroyo. The descent into Big Arroyo follows a creek drainage right here and then heads over into this valley where there's another creek drainage. This long switchbacks is a good way for to, to break up that uh, descent really until you get to like here where it's just steep downhill hard on the knees and then man was it it was slog. These are the hardest miles of the trip to be honest. Uh, getting back up Big Arroyo. There was scree. We'll fly over some of those uh, bogs. Uh, hottest part of the day. It's very, very hot down in this canyon. We can see that our, we hit our low elevation mark of uh, 8,000 feet as we, and then headed back up to another, you know, 1,500 feet to 9,500. We saw some cool gorges. There are some neat rapids in this creek here, but yeah, a lot of little ups and downs heading up this canyon, which you can see just like up and down, up and down, keeping with the theme that nothing's flat in this area. You can see there's where we got some water. So 
but I should say for a few of these miles we were able to keep our feet dry it was just like probably the last three or four where they just got they got really wet in the bogs and um, just created really bad blistering problems that we'd pay for in the future last few days of the trip here's one of them just impossible to keep your feet dry this whole area was wet and then another one <laughs> it was like as soon as you get through one there's another one all mosquitoes all just thick thick watery mud you have to walk through and then another one so these just long boggy fields lots of bear sign in here we didn't see any bears there's another one I'm surprised our miles were under 30 minute miles in here because we were going so slow and getting very weak um, it was a calorie extensive day I actually lost about a pound of weight per day on this trip despite eating on average uh, just about 4,000 calories each day here we are getting close to our beginning I'm gonna zoom out but not until we travel through a few more of these long bogs. All these green areas were just such a pain to get through. <laughs> uh, so this is definitely the longest, most epic section of the trip. Um, had we had it to do over, we would have just stayed up high on these lakes and then and out and back. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at our route for day six in Gaia GPS. Uh, application with the uh, Nat Geo topographical layer overlaid on our track here in red. So this will just help me uh, explain that the names of the places we're at a little bit better. So we headed up this pass towards the Little Five Lakes, uh, skip the ranger station. Uh, we can see Black Rock Pass there, which offers some neat loop hike opportunities in this range. At about another mile point seven over to these lakes the big five lakes and then we just continued south in hindsight i wish we would have hiked out over here and then just gone back <laughs> uh, hindsight 2020 but instead we continued on um, this is where we got lost off trail on the trail again uh, looks like the trip's a little off on this map compared to this travel line because we we're definitely on trail during that section down into Lost Canyon, Soda Creek Trail, Big Oro. And you can see when we were at Moraine Lake uh, the, uh, the night before, we were looking into this basin, so that was our sunset photos. And then throughout this day, we were looking up at Mount Kuya. So just gave off a great perspective of the mountain landscape being in here. I said plenty about the gnarly hike up a uh, big Arroyo Trail and how this 6.1 miles was more like 8 miles and it was the longest, hardest 8 miles of the trip. Alright, that's it for this section. One aspect of this uh, trip that I want to talk about is the time and place it took within uh, American history and that is right during this resurgence of the civil rights movement and the Black Lives Matter movement in the United States and hopefully globally. The movement is centered around dismantling racism as much as possible. Perhaps the lockdowns of the pandemic of COVID-19 helped catalyze that a little bit and as part of that backdrop I felt it important to just acknowledge that that was going on in our trip and in the real world and traveling into the wilderness doesn't allow us to escape that and it's because we were able to do this um, in a large part because Carly and I won the genetic lottery at birth by being born white into privilege. And so much of when we look back at 
where we've come from, so much of that is due to our white privilege and just the luck we, we had at birth. So um, there's, there's so much systematic racism that goes back to colonization and we're a part of that. So just as a tribute to everyone who's advocating for the Black Lives Matter movement or who would like to learn more about it or just lean into it a little bit, I'm going to read this um, small piece of writing that's been gaining traction on the internet throughout the movement. And I'm not 100% sure who wrote this, so if you wrote this, please take credit for it in the comments. It is no accident that you learned about Helen Keller instead of W.E.B. Du Bois. You learned about the Watts and L.A. riots, but not about Tulsa or Wilmington. You learned about George Washington's dentures were made from wool rather than the teeth from slavery. You learned about the New Deal, but not about redlining. You learned about Tommy Smith's first fist in the air at the 1968 Olympics, but not that he was sent home the next day and stripped of his medals. You learned about black crime, but white criminals were never lumped together and discussed in terms of their race. You learned about states' rights as the cause of the Civil War but not that slavery was mentioned 80 times in the Articles of Secession. Privilege is having history rewritten so, you don't, so that you don't have to acknowledge uncomfortable facts. Racism is perpetuated by people who refuse to learn or acknowledge this reality. You have a choice. Close for 
cold hills, post no bills. Coast to coast, chill, snow flows ill. Go chill, not supposed to overdose, no dose pills. Off pride tights, talk wide, do scar me. Off sides, like how wharf ride with star fleet. Told ya, want some get rich shit. As he gets older, he gets colder than a witch tit. This is it, make no mistakes. Where my nigga go? with my people and our oppression. I don't quite understand. Yeah, the same thing as you. I mean the same issue. You're right. It deals with America and the black and white problem, really. 